The fifth season of Power Rangers was an iconic season that had so much franchise history inside of it. Thousands of people shifted into Turbo with excitement. Hundreds of thousands of people shifted into Turbo and got the hell out of there. They didn't like what they were seeing. They was gone. Caught in the tire smoke was your boy Justin Stewart, the blue Turbo Ranger, who now, looking at today's superhero media, I'm like, damn, you know, the little kid could have been something special nowadays. He could have really been an extraordinary character. Now, Saban would have had to work around a little bit of the cringe. Or a lot of the cringe. You know, they would have had to cut a lot of meat. But beneath that could have been a special character. How you foreign nigga stop it? I was born in the tropics. I'm the way keep the mosh pit. And they came with a starship. Yeah. yeah, 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 I got it. Yeah, I'm really from the tropics. Fuck is you doing the next? What's good, Digital Trap Squad? Y'all know what it is, so check it, right? Alright, y'all, look. We all know that when it comes to Power Rangers, there's only been truly one child ranger in the history of the franchise, and that's Justin Stewart. So there's automatically a special place in the show's run related to Blake Foster, the actor that played Justin. Now, with that being said, you clearly know that it sampled a little bit from Dire Ranger. The White Ranger there was a kid. Kid was on demon time. Kid was doing some shit that makes me uncomfortable. Yeah, really uncomfortable. But then also it sampled from Beetleborgs. Beetleborgs came out in 1996 on the same network, Fox Kids. And, you know, Beetleborgs had that cringe package. You did? <laughs> They had the cringe package for you. Quit dreaming. I'm the most important potato in this town. You mean potato head, don't you? <laughs> <laughs> but you had kids becoming heroes there. So that's a piece of significance attached to his character. There's so many cool things they could have done with him through future appearances. First off, if you bring Justin back for different episodes and different sagas, he can really be the true audience surrogate. Now, when I talk about a surrogate, I'm talking about the member of the audience who's sitting at the crib, sitting at the, sitting on the couch, because your ass unemployed. I'm talking about that person who grew up with Power Rangers. You can see Justin is your age now. He's growing up. He's got a kid. You got a kid. <laughs> you can relate to the character through different things they're going through because it reflects you. Instead of it being JDF, it could have been Blake Foster's character, Justin. That would have been perfect as we see him throughout different eras of Power Rangers growing up to ultimately become a Tommy Oliver-esque figure. And as I was continuing to think about places Justin could go, right? I kept on coming back to his origin and how it all started and how that could kind of implement to who he becomes later on as an adult. We know that his story started off in a turbo movie, you know, on the bus, thinking about his pops. Later on, he's underneath Rocky's bed. Somebody called CPS. Um, after that, <laughs> There's some very, very, very um, interesting things that they could have done with the character, but unfortunately, Saban didn't do it. What if, once he got done having his childhood that he always wanted with his father, right? He goes on to have a new family. I'm playing, I'm playing, I'm playing. <laughs> I'm playing. He is not Vin Diesel. <laughs> he gonna pull up and be Dominic Toretto. <laughs> Fast and Furious, the Power Rangers Turbo sequel. Confirmed. <laughs> but no, 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 no. Seriously, though. Like, if you went on to want to forge a new path, right? Because that childhood excitement, 
that childhood optimism is still a part of him personally and he wants to fulfill that emptiness in his heart. Remember, you know, in Power Rangers Turbo, he kind of got erupted pulled away from it all, making a sacrifice play so that they could go into space to go save Zordon. We all clown on Justin. You know, he's easily clownable, but he was a true hero for doing that shit and not thinking about himself. Now, with that being said, I think that one place he could have gone is a future season, particularly in the Disney era, right? Now, the reason why I say in the Disney era is because seasons like Wild Force, seasons like Time Force, Ninja Storm make no damn sense for the character. I'm trying to keep Justin at a place where he has relatability. Think about when Tommy went from the dino-based seasons, Zeo, Turbo, Dino Thunder. There's a similarity there because they're both focused on dinosaurs. So, as we continue to think about where Justin could have gone, I'm thinking, okay, if he's gonna come in during the Disney era, it's gonna have to be a season that properly reflects Turbo. Somewhere where the Turbo ability the Turbo Adventures that he was on could actually benefit him and benefit another Ranger team. And I had an idea. Are you ready? I don't. You ready? I don't think Are so. Are you ready? Oh, uh, sure. Coming at you. Okay. Coming quick. Okay. okay. Power Rangers Operation Overdrive is like the closest thing we have to Turbo besides Lightspeed Rescue. And I say that very loosely. It's the closest thing. When you talk about Turbo, you talked about exploration. You talked about some adventures involving going places far and doing amazing things with vehicles. Well, Operation Overdrive had that a little bit, right? But what character would Justin play in Operation Overdrive? Yo, I was, I was thinking. I was thinking, ha! I had my writer's eye on. Justin could actually be in the role of Mac. The Red Ranger. Hold on now, I know what you're thinking. Mac was an android. That makes no sense. Hold on now, let me get to it. Coming at you. You take Mac out of that story and you put Justin inside that story and you erase the connection on an emotional level to Andrew Hartford. Because I don't know about y'all, I'm never going back again and watching Operation Overdrive Fuck all that, but when Max head is on a table with wires on it, I gave up last year. I'm, oh my God, Jesus. I, I gave up. This, this doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Like, how, why? He was having dreams, episode one. How, how, ah. It didn't make any sense, so you can eliminate him being an android, boom, that's done. There are other pieces of his story that'll benefit that team. Him being with Tommy Oliver, him being with TJ, him going on these global adventures in the Turbo movie could benefit that team in Operation Overdrive, right? I think it could also benefit a character like, oh, what was her name? What was her name? I want to call her Roxy so bad, but I know that's not her name. That's the love interest from Beast Morphers. Oh my God. Y'all give me a second. Ronnie, the Yellow Ranger. It could have benefited her with her being a race car driver. You could almost argue in a way that Justin had all of their skill sets put into one ranger. When you look at Dax being very good at martial arts, very good at stunts, that was Justin at a young age. Ronnie driving race cars. When you look at the pink ranger <laughs> being highly intelligent. When you look at all those skills they had, even Will, put your wallet away.
you might steal from you. Even Will's skill set was in a way inside of Justin at a young age and how he could have refined all of those skills to be the Red Ranger for Power Rangers Operation Overdrive. And then maybe even bringing him back for a later season in a guest role could have really played up this character to be extraordinary in the history of the show. My script sounded different in my head, you know, the, the idea is formulated different underneath the AC, but now I'm in a room with no AC, so the ideas don't sound so good. But uh, it's been weird, but it's been real. Uh, water, I need it. Get out of here. Bye, bitch. When I pull up, she gonna look though. Look at he mad, ain't look bro. She bad as hell, but can't cook though. It don't matter, but you still watching me while I did it for the look though. A hundred feet worth of drip, don't drown this fly shit. That's the look though. And look though, look though. I'm the wave, you can look though. I'm something different, I don't think you get it, but I still did it for the look though. Look though, look though. Yeah, I did it for the look though.